wheels, it's a sunny day. What the fuck, seriously? You could have lifted up your little non-working legs. We would have bobsledded you halfway down the goddamn avenue. You could have coasted into this bitch. Are you fucking eighth to seventh, motherfucker? Eighth to seventh? So, uh, tough town is all I'm saying. Tough town, not for everybody. Every New Yorker, at least once a week, somewhere in their commute, stops and goes, fuck it, I'm walking. That's it, fuck it. I don't care. I'm at the Statue of Liberty. I'm going to Yankee Stadium on goddamn foot right now. I'm not moving. Let's go. And my favorite thing about walking, if you're out there, if you, are, if you live here, if you're just visiting, if you're out here on these sidewalks, you will not be ever more than 15, 20 minutes on your little journey every day. You're going to stop. You're going to go, okay, what the fuck just dripped on my head? <laughs> Okay, all right. A, do not stop and look up. And that's the hardest part to do, because human nature is what drip, woo, what the fuck's what we do, you look up. But no, if that shit gets in your eye, you might as well go home, take a screwdriver, and just gouge the other eye out. Just gouge them both out. Might as well move to Mumbai and start singing under a bridge, because you're not going to be seeing shit out of either eye. You have to lie to yourselves. Do what the true New Yorkers do. The drip hits our head, and we immediately go, air conditioner, just walk a little faster. That's it. Doesn't matter if it's February and you're in the middle of a goddamn street. The answer is always drip, air conditioner, just fucking pick it up. You get home later, that patch of hair is not burned off your head. Everything's going to be all right. Okay, just... Go ahead and get something off the halal food cart. Just be a thrill seeker. Do whatever you need to do. But go in there and spin that wheel of barbecued scrat or whatever the fuck they're serving. So, What's up, New York City? Are we going to party tonight or what? Oh, my God. Great to be here. This is amazing. What a, what a crowd. What a crowd. Great to be here in New York City. I love New York City, man. You know, I started my show in New York City on MTV. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did a, about, about 12 years ago, I was doing a public access TV show in Canada, got picked up by MTV, they moved me here to New York City. Yeah, yeah. Now I have a YouTube channel, so my career's going pretty well. <laughs> no, it's great, we're here, we're doing a show on Mark Cuban's network, right? Last time I was here in New York, I was working for a billionaire, I was working for Donald Trump on The Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah, I got fired. Got fired in the third episode. Donald Trump was mad at me. He screamed at me. He screamed at me when he fired me. Didn't scream at the other celebrities. Didn't scream at Brian McKnight, whoever the fuck that is, right? <laughs> they, they put you in a room. They make you make cupcakes for 16 hours. You got Clint Black screaming in your ear all day. I don't want to say anything bad about Clint Black, but that guy's a fucking asshole, man. Donald Trump, he was like, you're fired! His hair went like that and that. You could see all the wires and buttons underneath. He was mad at me because I went out drinking with Dennis Rodman. On the night I was the project manager. That's a no-no. What are you supposed to do? You're in New York City, a seven-foot-tall cross-dressing basketball champion asks you out on a date, you say yes. Uh, Dennis Rodman, he's probably gonna pick you up, take you out for a steak dinner, you head out for a night on the town, have some cranberry vodkas, hit the strip club, at the end of the evening you head back to the hotel, if you're lucky he doesn't fuck you in the ass. <laughs> I did not get lucky. Uh, <laughs> he was gentle. That's what I call a backcourt violation, sir. See? <laughs> I'm trying things. I'm trying to be, um... I can try things. I went on a horse-drawn carriage ride with this. I did it! I really did it! I went on a... Nobody does that. You're right. Nobody does that. You don't know anyone who's ever done that. It's like for people who don't know. I went on a horse-drawn carriage ride. You shouldn't... Here's what happens. You think about it. You plan it. And then you sit down and you go, we shouldn't have done this. I don't know why. Why did we do this? It's just, I keep having, it just feels weird, you know? 
I have this thought over and over again, which is we have a car. I don't know why we're doing this. I keep thinking we have a car. We have a car, clip clop, we have a car. It's just kind of cold and weird. I feel bad for the horse. Don't you feel bad for these horses? They haul strangers around Manhattan their whole life. Where do these, where do these horses live? You, you're, a, you're a horse in Manhattan? Where do you live? In my head, he's got a fourth floor stable walk up in Chinatown and he just, he's got to clump up the stairs and kicks the door open and goes, I got to get out of this city. I don't know. I can't take it anymore. I'm going back to Kentucky. <laughs> Why do we think this notion of the past is so romantic? We do that though, right? But like a uh, hundred years from now, we're going to be going, hey, sweetie, you want to take a Ford Focus around the park? Should we do that? Isn't that, e that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> if someone from 1800 came to our time and saw that, they'd be going, why are you doing that? We've been, we've been trying to get rid of those for a long time. They stink and die. The main reason I love New York, though, especially, especially when the weather, weather's warm, the beautiful women. There are some beautiful women in this city. My God, my God, like, look at you. Oh, my God. I, man, I wish I brought a taser. Um, I say, some guys bring flowers. I need a guarantee. Get in the car. So, uh, no, no, I'm not joking. Stop it, stop it right now. My eyes are up here. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, you keep looking at me like that, you're gonna leave here with a limp and a black baby. Um, all I wanna say to you, sir, is uh, she is really out of your league. Um, and that's a good thing, no guy wants a girl in their league, let's be honest, that's only something women say. You guys make a cute couple, yay! Men, that's not a compliment to a guy. Guys are like, what? You wanna compliment a guy? You go, how the hell did you get that? <laughs> Which I'm sure you've heard a thousand times. Which, is, which doesn't, I'm not saying you're ugly, but she's beautiful and you own a mirror. So, uh... Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV with the best of season two, Return of the Zings. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's The Best of Season Two, Return of the Zings. We're back. One of the great things about filming at Gotham Comedy Club in New York is the diversity of the people in the city. They have everything from good races to horrible races. Which are which? That's for you to decide. Next up, these comedians discuss stereotypes in the U.S. I'm worried about the president, okay? Everybody's upset with Washington. A lot of people are upset with the president. The left is upset because they feel like he hasn't been liberal enough. The right is upset with him because they feel like he is being too liberal. I am upset with the president. You want to know why? Because twice now, I voted for a black president. You hear me? A black president. And he has been acting very beige. I want a black president. I'm talking about Mike Tyson Black. Suge Knight Black. I want a president that is so black, when I see him cross the street, I lock my fucking doors. Because I'm nervous. That's how you get shit done. Fear and intimidation. Fuck trying to get along. These Republicans don't like you. They ain't trying to help you. They are cock blocking each and everything you are trying to accomplish. It is time to get Gorilla on their ass. I want a black president. I'm talking about Sam Jackson, Pulp Fiction, black. I want a president that don't take no shit. I want a president that is so black. When he walks on the floor of the United Nations, foreign dignitaries look at him and go, not this motherfucker. Sign the titty, sign the titty, give him what he wants. This is what we need. This is what we need. I want a president that is so black. I'm talking about Wesley Snipes before he fucked up his taxes black. I voted for Blade. I want a superhero in the White House. He should be wearing tights and a cape, flying around the Capitol, making shit happen. That is what we want. I think we're gonna be all right.
I think we're gonna be all right. I really can't make fun of white girls too much. My girlfriend is white. She is. She's white. She's white. Funny thing I've learned though, hard being racist when you have a white girlfriend. Oh yeah. Can't just come home complaining about white people. <laughs> Them days are over. Them days are over. But what I started to do is, y'all, I'll take the white person I want to complain about and I'll just replace him with a homeless guy. <laughs> Dude, works, works like a charm. I'm just like, yeah, I was just at Park Slope at Starbucks. This fucking homeless guy <laughs> runs right into me with a stroller. No sorry, no excuse me. I'm like, well, fuck it. The world doesn't revolve around you and your precious little beer bottles, okay? You entitled homeless bitch, you know? She's like, babe, that's not nice. They live on the streets. I'm like, you should see some of the streets they live on. You ought to see some of the fucking streets they live on. But I think she caught on to my trick, y'all. I think she has, because the other day, she went to the movies with her friends, and when I asked her how it was, she goes, oh, these homeless people were talking the entire movie. <laughs> they would not shut the fuck up. They will in the movie. They came in 30 minutes after it started. They brought in their own food. You know how those homeless people are. Touche, baby, touche. I think I'm gonna leave you guys on this. The other day I was home watching television and that Dos Equis commercial comes on. You know the one? The most interesting man in the world, right? And I'm looking at this fucking beard. I'm like, shit, man, I'm starting to look like the most interesting black man in the world. <laughs> and then I thought, well, what would them commercials be like, right? <laughs> He's had a penis reduction. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Bloods and Crips both attend his house parties. 